Okay, what we're going to do today is we are going to do the um, first part of the Phase 5 assignment. So I've got the Phase 5 assignment open here. <laughs> it says um, we want to start by creating an additional worksheet named DB Calculations. Now I want to start out by saying do not use this link to download your assignment. Okay? When you start your assignment, you want to start from here. This is, you can see I've got my heads and salary by manager, my heads by job title pi. This is the assignment that we used for phase four. So you're going to be using your phase four assignment. You want to start by saving it as, and you want to save it as the phase five IPA. Okay, so make sure you do this because this is a big part of your uh, grade is your ability to do this um, this pivot chart and this pivot table. And depending on your instructor, your instructor may look at your phase four assignment to see how you did, but most likely your instructor is going to want to see um, your work here, and it's worth a pretty good percentage of your grade. So uh, make sure that you start again from your phase four assignment. Change the name to IPA, uh, IP5A. We're going to start with the five, uh, phase four data is what we're going to be using. We're going to create a new sheet right click to rename and we're going to call it DB calculations. Okay. Now I like to color my tabs. You can see I like to color my tabs. I have a coloring book. I like to color. So um, you can change your tab color if you'd like. You don't have to um, unless and again that's up to your teacher. If your teacher wants you to change it then by all means change it. Um, in my classes that's an optional um, that's optional and you're going to have to excuse all my mess I've got going on here. I'm writing in a research paper for my school, so I don't want to close anything because I don't want to lose my work. Okay, um, so we're going to start by, it says create an additional worksheet named DB Calculations. Now, it says set up a criteria range in the first few rows and columns to identify all hourly employees. So what's a criteria range? Well, if we're working with a, a database, okay, database takes criteria and it uses those criteria in order to uh, determine which data fits that particular criteria. In this case, we want hourly employees. Now, there's several ways that we can do this. Um, one of the ways that people do this is they'll, and, and we're, again, we're in phase four data. We're going to copy this whole top row. Okay, we can do it this way. Now, the benefit of doing it this way is we can change our criteria depending on what type of data we're looking for. So if we're looking for people in Kobe, we can change that. If we're looking for people now, something I want to point out, if you're familiar at all with uh, databases, you know that we have databases that um, we have an AND search or we have an OR search. Okay, an AND search means that both of the criteria need to be true. Okay, to do an AND search, we're going to put both of the criteria on the same line. Okay, so I'm going to do my location as Kobe and my job title as customer service rep representative. No, I'm going to do manager because it's shorter to type. Okay, so I'm going to do Kobe and manager. This is going to be an and, this is going to be an and uh, search, which means what it's going to do is it's going to find any data here that meets both criteria. So it's going to look at the Kobe Japan people, okay, and it's going to pull anybody who's a manager who's in Kobe Japan. So we're going to get, we already know this, right, we're going to get Waku and that's it. Now, let's say instead we want to do an or. So we want all the people in Kobe or we want all the people who are managers. So now we can put manager down below, okay? And then we have an or search. So we'll find all the people in Kobe. So it's going to pull all the people who are in the location Kobe, all of them. And then it's going to pull all the people also who have the job title manager, which we know is, what, three, four people? So we're going to get basically two sets of data that are going to be pulled here. The, the people who are in the Kobe location and the managers. Now, we can add more criteria. Okay, and, and I'm typing the big long one here, representative. Okay, so we can, um, we can do this. So now we have customer service representative and Kobe. Okay, so now we're going to pull all the people from Kobe who also are customer service representatives. Customer service representatives and we're also going to pull all the managers, regardless of their location, because we don't have an and uh, an and here, okay? Because we don't have anything else on the same line. And we can add more. You can as as many times as you want to add. You can add ors, okay? So that's um, just an idea of how criteria tables work. Now, like I said, 
that's um, it's kind of a, a nice way to do it. You can do it that way. Now, if you're going to do, and that's that's um, that works really well if you're going to be changing things up a lot. So if you're going to be doing multiple searches, but let's say you're just going to be do, doing the one search like we have in our assignment here. So we have um, a criteria range in the first few rows and columns to identify hourly employees. Okay, how do we identify hourly employees? Well, if we look at our data, hourly employees are in the type column. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select. I'm going to copy that type here. And the reason I copy it is because if you have typos, the computer gets really wiggy. It can't infer things. It can't figure things out if it's right. If it matches exactly, it'll work. If it doesn't match exactly, it won't work. So it doesn't really work. Um, it, so I copy and paste just to make sure. Um, the bold is not important, but the, the letters and like you have in spaces, things like that are going to be uh, important. Now, what we want is hourly employees. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste an hourly too because the data within the range is also important. It has to match. Okay, so that's it. I've set up my criteria table here. That's, that's what I've done. I've set up my criteria table. Very, very, very easy. Um, now for the next one that we're going to do, we have to do a, um, a second criteria range in the columns next to it that identified the software analyst with salaries less than 55000 so same thing, we're going to need two columns. So where are the software analysts? Okay, the software analysts, if we scroll down, we can see that those are in column E, so they're in the job title column. So, um, so we're going to go over here, and I'm just going to skip a couple rows. And uh, we need, what did we need, software analysts? Is that right? Software, uh, software analysts. Okay, software analysts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I like to copy and paste just because I know that way I'm going to get the data right. Um, if you have a significant amount of data and it's not easy to copy and paste, you can type it out. Um, that, that works just as well, but this way I'm just sure that I'm not going to make an error. Okay, now the next thing is we need salaries less than 55000 I'm sorry. So salaries less than 55000 we know are going to be in the salary column. Okay, so we're going to go over here and we're going to do salary. Now, how do we do less than 55000 Well, we can go through here and we can find all the salaries that are less than 55000 and copy and paste, right? But what if we have like 10,000 employees? You know, why, I mean, why do this database search if we're going to just go through manually and pull each one that fits our criteria? That's ridiculous. So what we have to do is we have to put it in a format that the computer understands. So how does the computer say less than? The computer says less than with the little the alligator. And remember the alligator always eats the, the big one. So we want less than 55,000, which means 55,000 is going to be the biggest. So that's the one where it's going to be eating. So we're just going to put 55,000. Now notice that I did not put a dollar sign in here. I did not put a comma because those are text characters and it, it kind of freaks the computer out. The computer, uh, the comma I think is okay, but the dollar sign will um, take this into, it will make it text instead of making it, um, making it uh, a number, and so the computer won't find it. Okay, so from there we have our two, we have our two criteria table. Okay, one, two, that's it, that's all we have to do, that's a criteria table, very basic, very easy. Okay, the next thing we, it says, it says, in any cell beneath the criteria range, use the decount function to calculate the number of hourly employees using the first criteria range, and then again to calculate the number of the software analysts with salaries less than 55000 Okay, so this is easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to use decount. Now, I'll always recommend if you're using a function for the first time to use the uh, insert function command. So we're just going to find decount here. And there's decount right there. So I'm going to do decount. Okay, so my database, what's my database? It says it's the range of cells that makes up the list or database. A database is a list of related data. Well, where do we have a list of related data? Over here, right? So I'm just going to select this whole range of data right here. Okay, now the field is either the label of the column in double quotation marks or number that represents the column's position in the list. Okay, so now look at this. It says um, counts the cells containing num numbers, containing numbers. So if we look at our, our data, we can see that there's really only one column that has numbers, right? It's the salary column. So we either have to use salary, okay, we can use salary, that'll work, or um, if you remember from our VLOOKUP, you can see this is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the seventh position. So we can also put the number seven here. 
Okay, either one is going to work. Okay, then our criteria, our criteria is going to be our criteria table. So we're just going to select the whole criteria table. And you see, I get a 22. Okay, see my 22 here? Now watch, if I change this to salary, salary, see, I also get a 22. But if I change this, I'm going to do, just use 6. We know that that's one column to the left. Notice I get a 0. Why do I get a 0? I get a 0 because there are no numbers in that column. It has to be a column that contains numbers. Okay, I get a 22. Okay, that's lovely. But what is that number? 22. Nothing. It's really important to label your data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this um, hourly employees. Okay, so now I have a label. So now I know what this represents. Okay. Uh, next I'm going to do um, software analysts um, earning less than 55000 Okay, so now I have my second one. I'm going to do the same thing here. <coughs> now this time I'm going to set it up without using the function. Okay, so I'm going to do decount. Now, see it does the same thing, database. Okay, what's my database? Same exact thing it is here. Okay, so here's my database. Do a comma. Okay, next my field. Okay, same field. This is the only field that has numbers in it. So I can either do salary. Remember, in quotes, sal oops, do a capital, salary. Okay, or I can do the number seven, not in quotes. Okay, either one is fine. And then the next one is my criteria. So I'm going to go back over to my criteria, and I'm going to select both rows and both columns this time. Now, you don't need this DB calculations because it's in the same, um, it's in the same spreadsheet, so we can take that out if we want. All right, and then we're going to close it out, and voila, five. Five software analysts, this is supposed to be a capital A, software analysts, or you know what, I'm just going to call it analysts. Analysts, there we go, earning less than $55,000. Okay, so now I have these numbers that I need to set this up. <clears throat> okay, now the next thing I'm going to do, it says multiply the count of hourly employees by 2,000 and then the 55,000 by 4,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a times. This is just a label. Okay, this is so that people who are looking at my spreadsheet know what I'm doing. Okay, and I'm going to do this by 2,000 and this by 4,000. And I'm going to change these to, um, to, you can either use accounting or you can use currency, whichever you prefer. So that, that way people who are looking at this know what's going on. I can do an equals, oops, and then, oops, oops. Okay, I did equals and then tab, or if you have trouble, you can put a little um, apostrophe in front of the equals, and that makes it a text. So um, uh, apostrophe and then equals, and that makes it a test text so that it doesn't um, get more inf uh, more. It doesn't try to make it into a formula. And then I'm just going to do a formula to do this: two thousand times twenty-two and equals four thousand times five. And you can just drag that down because it'll work. See if I don't do it this way, I can just drag it down this way. Drag it down like that. Okay. Was that right? 2,000 and 4,000? Fifty-five, two thousand, four thousand. 2,000, 4,000. Yep, I guess that's right. Okay, and then we're going to add those together. So I'm just going to do auto sum to add those together. And then it's always a good idea to do a little formatting in order to make it easier to read. So I'm just going to make this into a total row. I'm going to make this total, and then um, if you want to do, I mean, you can, whatever you want here, you can color it in just to kind of set it apart from everything else. See, so now we know what's going on, but um, formatting is entirely up to you, and it depends on what your instructor requires, um, but that's going to get you through the first part, and then in the next video, we're going to go through how to, um, how to do the calculations.